Can you tell me a little bit about uh, video life cycle management, what it is, uh, and well, here's an open-ended question, how, how TimeSight automates it? All right. Well, video life cycle management, I'll start from where it came from, and then what it is, and what I think it's going to look like in the future. We're in a world in security that's undergoing really rapid change. There's a sea change in terms of the number of cameras being deployed, which is escalating annually. Uh, the amount of data coming out of every camera, which is really exploding now that technology commoditization has set into camera technology. What used to be a three, four, five thousand dollar camera is now a few hundred dollars. And so you've got more cameras. Every camera is a data generator. Every camera is now spewing out more data than ever before because it's denser and denser and denser resolution. And that's becoming a real budget strain for people trying to protect property, plants, and equipment. So video life cycle management is a way to step up and address that challenge, which is the explosion of data. Simply stated, video life cycle management is the ability to shrink data over time as it gets older, less relevant, and less valuable to the business. Some of the techniques used, the primary technique is compression. You see, in, in today's world in video surveillance, it's kind of a one and done. When you install a camera, you set the compression level that you think you can live with. If you need really rich data, you set a small level of compression, which means high quality. If you can have very poor quality, you'll set a higher compression, so it takes up less disk space, but you decided you don't need good data. Video lifecycle management is the way to have really good data early on when you really need it, and then as time passes and nothing terrible has happened, there's been no robberies, explosions, terrorist events, losses, etc., you can continually shrink that data by increasing the compression as it gets older. Yeah. How do you do this without really <coughs> affecting the quality of the video or losing critical information? Is there, is there, any, is there still a risk involved? So there, you know, there's actually two questions. How do you do it? And what's the risk? Uh, the way we do it is pretty interesting. Most all video that is installed in the world today is encoded via hardware chips. Either there's a chip in the camera that does the digitization of it, or there's a chip in a DVR that does the digitization of it. The problem with a hardware-based encoding is that's the one and done. You set the settings when you install the camera, and that's the, the compression level that it's set for when it's thrown out to disk. You can't go get video and throw it back to a camera a day or a week or a month later and say, please recompress this to a different level. It's done the way you installed it. So the first thing is, how do we do it, is we do all of the encoding in software. The data comes in from the camera in its richest format. And then you can make choices. Keep it in the richest format for a day, two days, three days. After there's been no robberies, terrorist events, kidnappings, etc., compress it down to maybe one half of its original size, because now it's a software application that's doing that encoding, and it can do it again and again and again to the stored video. So that's the how. The risk, um, when you compress data, you're making a trade-off. You're saying, I want to reduce my storage, and I've made the decision it's okay to give up a little bit of the clarity. That's a decision most people make up front, and they give up most of the quality up front, because they say, I have to live with this for 60 or 90 or 180 days, so I'm going to give up quality so that I can have retention time. Video lifecycle management says don't give up the quality early. That's when you really need the quality. So there is a trade-off in quality as you increase the compression. You're giving up some of the clarity, but you're doing it consciously, not because you have to. You're doing it because you've made the decision that's when to give it up. The, the video is still maintained, though. It's still a rich, high-quality video that's as good as if you would have captured it at that level day one. Now, what, what was interesting in your presentation, you brought this up, and maybe <clears throat> people don't think of it that much, but given megapixel cameras, mm -hmm you actually get better quality from Significantly. the compressed, from, from, the same, from the same amount of bit space, the same amount of That's megabit right. of storage, or gigabit storage, megabit storage, or kilobit storage. Why, why is that? Why do you, why, why does say, a, uh, can, a, can a 40 kilobit uh, megapixel camera feed give you more information than a 70 megabit 2 sit feed? Quite simply, you've got more pixels feed. to work with. Think of trying to capture an image of my face. If you have 100 points to work with, that becomes a standard of quality. What if you had 1,000 points to work with? You get much more granularity. Even if you compress it, you're not giving up the points of the pixels. What you're giving up is a degree of the differentiation between them in terms of color or light or shading. So by having more pixels available to you, you've got a finer grain to work with as you increase the compression as you go down. And our customers constantly see that 
they'll get a two megapixel image, which is beautifully rich and couldn't be touched by a SIF or VGA camera. But even as they compress it down over time, it can be a half or even less the size of, of let's say, a VGA and still get much better clarity because even though we've done the compression, even though you've gotten rid of some of the color and light shadings, you've still got six times as much data to work with. What degree are you platform independent? Yeah, so video lifecycle management is a concept. It's not our product, it's a concept. We happen to be the first company that's been able to make it work, though many have tried. Um, we sell appliances that are essentially NVRs, network video recorders. You can keep the data on our appliance. It has anywhere from two to eight terabytes of capacity. But we have some large users that need much more storage than that. You've got hundreds of cameras and they want a one-year retention, so you can use external storage. There are players in the industry, you know, Transa, Pivot 3, and others, that could provide external storage that would sit behind our video recorder. It's transparent both to the concept of VLM and to our software. It really doesn't matter. It's what makes the best economic fit for the customer. What are the things to worry about with storage? What are the things not to worry about? So I think there's actually two extremes in our industry of physical security, because storage by its nature can be very complex. It's a 20 plus billion dollar industry for companies like EMC and IBM and Hewlett Packard, so it can be very complex. In the security world, you've got a whole range of people that actually oversimplify it to the point where it causes a lot of risk for the user. They say, eh, you should only need a couple of terabytes. Make it really simple. What that means is in order to fit into that, that customer has to either reduce his clarity or shorten his retention. And this is not the way you want to go when you're trying to cover your risk. You want better quality and longer retention. So, number one, I think more people undercomplicate it than overcomplicate The good news in the surveillance world is you don't have the same complexities as you do in the IT data center. It's valid, valuable data, but you don't have to do things like snapshotting, replicating, or even off-site archiving in many cases. What you need is to be able to fit in this retention time. You can do that with a good, solid, enterprise-class storage solution and VLM. And I think the, quality, the, the mix of those two, enterprise-class storage with VLM, can, can package really nicely for those customers that are facing, oh my gosh, I have to now become an expert in storage because by going to megapixel cameras, I'm going to need hundreds of terabytes. Don't do that. Get a, get a nicely sized 10, 20, 30 terabyte enterprise storage system using VLM, and you can avoid a lot of the complexity for years to come.